Have you ever heard of the fascinating and mysterious book of giants? It is not part of the main Hebrew text, but it adds a whole new layer to the story in Genesis, much like the book of Enoch. The two works are an attempt to explain how it was that wickedness became so widespread and influential before the flood. Thus, it also given the reason why God was more than justified in sending this flood. The book is an antediluvian narrative that is derived primarily from Anakian literature. References to the mythology of the giants can also be found in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. The books of Enoch, Jubilees, Barak 2 and 3, the Damascus document, and the visions in Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. This book told the origin and fate that these creatures and their fathers, the Watchers, called Gregors, sons of God or saints, who rebelled against heaven when in violation of the strict boundaries of creation, they mingled in their lust with the daughters of men. Many people find these very passages in the book of Enoch interesting. The book of giants is devoted entirely to these points of interest and largely unfolds the narrative of the Enoch manuscript in even greater detail. That's why this video will shock you. If you're ready for this, Let's start exploring the history of the giants. The giants, the offspring of the fallen angels, are considered even more depraved than them. Subsequently, they were variously called Nephilim, Raphim, and other names. They are described as earthly half-breeds who fought against God and His righteous followers, whose numbers dwindled and corruption and evil engulfed the world. Manichaean fragments give these wicked men the general name of demons. Although the terms for the Watchers and their descendants are often confused in the various translations and iterations in apocryphal sources, these rebellious races are collectively called fallen angels, as well as in the biblical narratives that mention them. Origins in Ancient Jewish Tradition The Book of Giants was known as a Middle Iranian work, but researchers today believe that it was originally written in Eastern Aramaic. Around AD 216 to 274, the book circulated among the Manichaeans as a work attributed to Manna, a Parthian citizen of southern Mesopotamia, who appears to have been a follower of Elxe, a Judea Christian prophet and seer who lived in the early 2C. In the 20th century, several finds shed considerable light on the literal evidence for the Book of Giants. In 1943, W.B. Henning published Manichaean fragments of the book found in Turfan, western China, present-day Xinjiang province. This finding subsequents the numerous accounts of the circulation and use of the book among the Manichaeans. Further identification of the Manichaean Book of Giants was revealed in 1971 when Yosef T. Millick discovered several additional Aramic fragments of Manichaean writings among the Dead Sea Scrolls, finding that the fragments bore a strong resemblance to the Manichaean Book of Giants. He concluded, the giants were originally integral part of the Book of Enoch itself. These fragmental scrolls in Aramic represented the Anishian tradition in which manna probably became acquainted during the stay with the Gelsiatas. This seems to have been the main source used by him in the composition of his book, in which he makes the legend of the Watchmen and the Giants the cornerstone of his theological reasoning. For many scholars, the Cormoran fragments confirmed that the Book of Giants was originally an independent composition from the Second Temple period. Among the fragments found in Qumran, Lauren Stuckenbrook identified ten manuscripts of the Book of Giants. These fragments were found in Caves 1, 2, 4, and 6. The discoveries led to the further classification of 10 Aramic manuscripts containing parts of the Book of Giants, which until their recognition at Qumran were known only through Manichaean sources. There is much speculation as to the original language of the book. It is generally believed that it was a Semitic origin. In fact, the discovery of this text at Qumran has led scholars such as K.P. von Andel and Rudolf Otto to believe that while these ancient Aramic versions of the book are the earliest known, the work likely has even earlier Jewish antecedents. 
R.H. Charles translator and publisher of the Book of Enoch argued in 1906 that Enoch was built on the debris of an older Noah saga than that on Genesis, which only vaguely mentions the Enoch myth. Millek himself offers his own hypothesis that Enoch's creation story and account of God's law predates the accounts of Moses' Sinai in Genesis. He sees in Genesis chapter 6, 1 through 4, a quotation for what he believes to have been the earlier source of Enoch. This passage still puzzles Bible scholars to this day. New research such as the Kloss Bear suggests that the Book of Giants was originally composed in Hebrew in the 3rd century BCE, with the names of the giants Gilgamesh, Hawabesh, betraying a Babylonian origin. The Babylonian origin claim based of the appearance of the names, however, was quickly refuted by Martinez. What is in the Book of Giants? The Dead Sea Scrolls discovered at Qumran in 1948 contains a fragmentary text in Aramaic. Due to the fragmentary nature of the book, it has been difficult for researchers and linguists to know the exact order of the contents. The work Giants is closely related to its counterpart, the One Saint Enoch, which also tells a story about giants. Researchers are faced with numerous questions, one of which is related to the oral or written transmission of the Enoch tradition. They still do not have a definite answer as to why the Qumran community consider the Enochian text important to own, preserve so many copies compared to other textual traditions found there. In the Book of Giants, we find an expanded account of the biblical story of the birth of the giants in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. In this account, they appeared when the sons of God of the Wachu, according to the history-confirming account of the Jubilees, were originally sent by God to the earth to instruct and educate mankind in right ritual and ethical conduct to do that which is fair and just on earth. However, they were seduced by the human women and had sexual intercourse with them, for which a hybrid race of giants was then born. These watchers and giants are Nephilim, performed destructive and grossly immoral acts that revenged humanity, including revealing the sacred heavenly secrets or mysteries to their wives and children, as well as to humanity in general. When Enoch heard of this, he became alarmed and appealed to God who in his long suffering and by divine revelation counsel called Enoch to preach repentance to them, so that these earthly races might escape God's wrath and destruction. In his mercy, God decided to give the fallen watchmen an extra chance to repeat by giving dreams to several of their giant sons, including two brothers named Oha and Hahachi, who gave the dreams to a gathering of the Gregorian and Nephilim companions. This gathering of watchmen and giants was perplexed by the dreams, so they sent a giant named Mahavi to the abode of Enoch and the places where he preached. Mahawi was instructed to first hear what the prophet was saying before turning to him for an oracle. In his attempt to intercede for them, Enoch provided himself not only as the oracle that the watchers and giants requested, but also gave them double tablets that revealed the full meaning of their dreams and God's future of judgment upon them. When the watchmen and giants finally heard heaven's answer, many of them in transcendent pride and arrogance chose instead to turn from their evil ways to act in defiance of God. The Qumran fragments are incomplete at this point. The version, like its Manichaean counterpart, associates the names of the Sumerian king Gilgamesh and the monster Humbaba with the Watchers and Giants. Manichaean Version The Manichaean version is similar to that found at Qumran, but adapted Manas' story of the cosmos. The fallen angels here are archon demons who have escaped from their prisons in the heavens where they were placed at the construction of the world. They staged a brief uprising and in the process, 200 of them escaped to earth. While most given names are similarly translated into the Iranian language, Ohya and Hahiya are renamed Sam and Nariman. The version also contains a full finale telling how the forces of light led by four angels identified with Michael, Gabriel, 
Raphael, and Ural subdue the demons and their offspring in battle. Other text. Much of the content of the book is similar and most closely related as already mentioned to 1 Enoch 7, 3 through 6, a passage that sheds light on the characteristic features of the giants. It reveals the giants are born of the sons of God and the daughters of men. The giants increasingly broke away from the values of the fellow humans and began to observe the deeds of what they perceived as an inferior race, the human race. They started killing people and cruelly exploiting them in slavery and sexual debauchery. They also indulged in sodomy and hedonism. They have also been known to engage in other morally dubious acts, often driven by their immense physical strength and disregard for societal norms. The authorship of the Qumran Book of Giants is still a matter of debate among scholars. Despite so many surviving copies from Qumran of the complete work of Enoch, they originally believed that the manuscript was literally used among the desert sectarians. More recent research states, the discoveries at Qumran strongly rule out the possibilities that the Manicheans were the compilers of the Book of Giants since their work followed later. As for the comparisons that could be made with the canonical texts, the books of Daniel and one Enoch have similarities, such as their visionary elements. Stuck and Brooks suggest that these similarities allow for possibility that the author Daniel knew the early Anachurian traditions well enough to use them and then adapt them for his own purposes. We can see this most clearly in the throne Theophany itself. All of these Anician writings were of great importance by the beginning of the first century. The early Christian church valued Enoch and considered him a canonical. However, due in no small part to the influence of the Alexandrian philosophers who disliked it, its content was considered by many in the Hellenistic era to be silly or strange. The entire work of Enoch quickly clashed with the ideas of Christian and Jewish doctors who considered it a tainted product of the Qumran essays. Millick suggests that the reason the book was censored by Christian authors was its popular use by Manicheans. Subsequently, the book was also banned by such orthodox authors as Hilary, Jerome, and Augustine in the fourth century and gradually went out of circulation, finally being lost to the knowledge of Western Christianity. If you like what we do, share it with us in a comment. You can support us by subscribing to the channel.